Welcome back everyone to Programming 101. We are gonna, this is, show you the solution for the date function, for the date function. Okay, so as you remember, we are doing the, this assignment was to add one day to any given date. And we're gonna try to do that today for you. Um, so given this as our objective, uh, what we've done so far is to take the user input. So let's um, go through a sample user input right now. Let's say um, April 30th, 2016. So we take a sample user input and we store that in month, day, and year variable. So for now, we will say the month is four and Let's just do that in red so we could um, keep this going. Month is four. The day is the 30th, so that would be 30. And the year would be 2016. Okay. At this point, we want to add one day to the variable D, which is what we're doing. D is equal to D plus one. So at this stage, D would be 31. D as in this D is 30 plus one gives you 31. Then we validate our <coughs> our numbers now. So we said if D is greater than 31, then D is equal to one and month is equal to one. But since D at this point is not greater than 31, uh, it does not reset here this part does not get executed. It only gets executed if D is greater than 31. And then down here, we would show the sample date solution and that led us to a date of four slash 31 slash 2016, which as we all know, is not a valid date because January, February, March, April only has 30 days, not 31. So this date is invalid. So somewhere along our steps here did not account for certain variables that's allowing us to have this incorrect final solution. So how do we stop that? So we could continue to go down this road and continue to um, double check for April, for May, for June, for August. And that would probably be a decent solution to say if month equals, let's say April, we could go ahead and make certain adjustments. But logically thinking, what we want to do is to identify uh, categories of months. So um, what we should do, one of the things we wanna think about in the validation process, so let's just do this right now, is what are we going to uh, evaluate? So if we think about our years of, if we think about the year as a total, one of the things that comes to mind is that the year, certain months are similar to other months. So let's say January has 31, February we know is a crazy month that has 28 or 29, depending on if it's a leap year. But uh, March, for example, also has 31. April has 30 days, and so does June. So certain months will act like other months. So when you group those like months together, you don't really have 12 months. What you have is something that looks more like this. So let's see. So in here, I will just, let me just indent this for you so it's a lot more readable. My goodness, I don't know what's going on with my um, <coughs> with my indentations today. So what it comes down to is you're gonna have months with 30 days. So that is like a specific category of months. Oh Jesus Christ, what's going on today with this? Months with 30 days, there we go. Let's highlight that. 
and then you're gonna have months with 31 days let's highlight that and then of course you're gonna have February so <coughs> you have months with 30 days which are these months April June September and November you have months with 31 days which are January March May July August October and December and then you have February which has 28 or 29 depending on if it's a leap year or not let's just put these in so April has is month number four June is month number six and September is month number 10 I believe <laughs> no nine sorry and November is month number 11 and those are the months with 30 days so as we go through our validation step we're going to keep this in mind that these months will act exactly the same and February will act as February so when we get down to this step which is if D is greater than 31 we're not going to do that anymore because not all months have 31 so what we're going to do is before we do this step we're going to check the month so we're going to check the month so if month which we use the value mm if month equals let's go with let's start with uh, months with 30 days so that would be april june september and november four six nine and eleven so if month is equal to four or six or nine or eleven then um, what we're going to do is we're going to set we're going to store the set the um, set a new variable let's store that as um, let's call it max days in month and you're going to set that to 30 because those months have 30 days okay so that should be pretty clear and then so that was a if month and then over here we're going to do the the same thing for the other set of months so if month is equal to these months which are January, March, May, July, August, October, and December. 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. It'll be 1 or 2 or 5 or 7 or 8 or 10 or 12. Then we're going to do this, which is to set the maximum days of the month equal to 31 so let me highlight this as a new variable so all we're doing is storing the maximum days for the month so we know what type of a month we're dealing with now the third uh, month that we have to keep in mind is February so let's do let's just do February while we're at it so if month is equal to 2 then what do we do when month is equal to 2 we have to check leap year if year if the year value when divided by 4 has no remainder then that is leap year right so that we know that that will be a leap year leap year let's do it like that so we know that that will be a leap year so in that case 
we will say that the maximum days for this month, let me just take this, we're gonna set this variable, since it is a leap year, to 29. And then in the case where if Y has a remainder, so in the case where Y has a remainder, then, it, then this is not a leap year. So we're gonna say this is not a leap year. Then what we're gonna do in this case if it's not a leap year, we're going to set the maximum days of the month to only equal to 28 days. Okay. So that seemingly very small adjustment goes a long way. So I think you guys got the idea behind uh, the months now that we've broken them down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this section. This was just for reference purposes. So here we go. Now that we have our months, you know, four, six, nine, and 11, let's just make sure we have all the months. So months equal one or two. No, this is not, this should not be two over here. Uh, one or March is three. So we have, uh, from here, we have months one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, we have seven, we have eight, they should say or, eight, we have nine, we have 10, we have 11, and we have 12. So we accounted for every single month. And we accounted for the leap year if we're in month two, okay? So now we could get rid of this part. So in this check, the validation step, we're gonna say if D is greater than this value, whatever this value is, whatever that value is, if D is greater than that value, we are gonna reset the month. So let's run through the same exact example, giving the new set of variables that we added in here. So again, uh, the user input was 430, 2016, and we wanna add one day. So we go here, month equals four, day equals 30, year equals 2016. We're gonna add one to the day, that's gonna make it 31. Then we're gonna validate by checking the month first. So we say is if month equal four, six, nine, or 11, which it falls under this category right here, that would say uh, day equal 30. So we're gonna set the maximum day of the month to 30, okay? This doesn't apply because these are not, these are months three, uh, one, three, five, seven, 11, 10, 12, and it's not month two, so this does not apply. So we keep going down until we get to this part. And it says, if day is greater than this value, and this value we just set right here, equal 30. So at this point, the user input for day, the day was 30, we added one to it. So day is now equal 31. And we're checking to see basically what this statement is saying <coughs> is 31 greater than 30 is basically what this statement is saying and that is true so if that is true we're going to set the day back equal to one so let's go back to our processing color and we're going to say that this is equal to one and now the month is going to be added plus one so we know that the month that was submitted is four. We have not changed the month at all, except now it's gonna be four plus one. So let's do that. It's gonna be four plus one, which equals to five. 
and then we're going to go ahead and display the solution so we have now the month month day and year so the month is now calculated to be five so month equal five the day has been reset to one <coughs> to one and the year has not changed so that is still 2016 so just by instituting this in the validation section what we've end up doing is corrected the error that was there before which is 431 2016 when we added one day to it it was given us 431 2016 430 plus one would give us 431 2016 which is a wrong invalid date and now just by adding this simple change this date 431 now gives us the correct date of 5 1 2016 <coughs> But, but our solution is not yet complete because we haven't accounted for <coughs> changes in the year. Changes in the year. So <coughs> what we've had to do is have to do one additional validation step. So after you validated the change in here and you added one to the month, you have to do yet one additional validation step and this is the validation for the year because what every time the month value increases by one there's a possibility that it might go from 12 to 13 so you have to do one additional check here so you say if the value for the month is now greater than 12 greater than 12 then you're not going to change the day the day stays the same but if the month changes, you are going to reset, if it's greater than 12, which means it's 13, let's say, we are going to um, reset the month to one because that will be the first of the year. And we're gonna reset the year as well. And it's gonna be year is equal to year plus one so we could try that and that should be our entire solution so let's try that first let's try it with another sample date let's try one of these troublesome dates in February so the new date will be February 29 2016 because 2016 was a leap year so this becomes 2 this becomes 29 this becomes 2016 you add 1 to the date it gives you 30 a lot of students have a problem adding 1 to the date before the value validation and that's just normal so add 1 to the date that gives you 30 we're going to go through this. It says if month equal 4, 6, 9, or 11, which it does not, we'll skip to the next one. If month equal 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, or 12, it does not, we skip to the next one. If month equals 2, ah, look, our month does equal 2. So this is our validation step. It says if y, when divided by 4, has no remainder, which 2016 is one of that that is 4 into 25 4 into 16 4 it goes in 54 times evenly then it is a leap year so what we want to do is set the maximum days for this month to be 29 okay good so we're going to make sure that this is the one that we're using maximum days for the month is equal to 29 now so we um <coughs> skip this because it does not have a remainder and then we go to this step. It says if maximum days for the month, which we know is now 29, if D is greater than 29, because D is now 30. So if 30 is greater than 29, then D equal 1. So again, this is now 1. And month equals 
month plus one, which is two plus one, which is now three, month equal three. And then you check the month again. So it says if month is greater than 12, which it is not, you do this, so therefore nothing gets done here. And then you display the new date. And the new date is now month three. Day is one and year is still 2016. So as you can see here, the steps still show still show that when you add one day to February 29th, it actually gives you the right at the right uh, correct new date. Um, let's see. So let's try one at the end of the year, which is 12 31st. So for 12 31st, the month is now 12. The day is now 31. The year is still 2016. 31 plus 1 gives me 32. We now check our dates. Let's reset this to be in black. Uh, we said if month equal 4, 6, 9, and 11, it does not. The month is equal to 12 up here. If month equal 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, or 12, yes, it does. We're going to set the maximum days in the month to 31. Okay, so that is now 31. Okay. So you go down to this step. It says if day is greater than maximum days a month. So we know that the day is 31. Day is actually day plus one is equal to 32. We know that the day is now 32, and we know that we set the maximum days in the month now to be 31. So we're going to put that down here as 31. So basically, what this says if D is greater than the set maximum days of the month, so if D32 is greater than 31, which is true, we're going to set D equal 1. And we're going to set month equal month plus one, which is 12 plus one, which equals to 13. Then we go to this step and says if month isn't greater than 12, which it is, it's now 13, then we're going to set the month equal one and the year is equal to year plus one. So month goes back to being one. Okay, let's keep track of our variables here. And the year uh, becomes 2016 uh, plus one, which equals to, you guessed it, 2017. So now we do this, let's do the new date. So new date will be, what's the month? month is back to one based on this step the month was reset to one the day based on this step was reset to one and the year based on this step was reset to 2017 and so that identifies all the steps that you would need to create a new date. And this set of steps will work for any given date. I'm gonna post this online and you guys could check that out. A um, Couple of things I want to point out first before I end the video. Uh, let me get rid of these. Um, let's do this. Is that a lot of programmers do not like to change the value of the user input. So for example, let me show you this. Um, this Wait, what did I do? My keyboard is the worst today. Oh, I hate that. 
anyway let me just keep going come on delete what is going on today with this keyboard So there we go. All right, so we're gonna delete this. I apologize for that, guys. Delete this. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete that. All right. So a couple of things. Uh, programmers often do not like to change these values. So once this is set as the user inputs as D, day, and year. You should always try to keep those pure, which means at any time when you say M, it should always refer back to the user input. Um, especially down here, you see how M is changing all the time? So what they would like to do is instead of saying D equal one or date equal one, you would say uh, new date you would set that variable for new date so let me let me see what I what the, let me try to explain that a little better so this is month day and year you do not want to change this so what you would do is you would add a temp date so you'd add a add temporary date and for that date um, and for this temporary date you would have something that's something like that looks like this new day the new day is equal to D let's say and the new month M is equal to dollar sign month and the new year is equal to dollar sign year so what does that do basically it stores m as m d as d and y as y so that is the user input that's coming in to be saved there and then that input gets saved as a new date so as you are going through your programs you wouldn't change d so for example when you get to this step and this step says d plus one equals d what this would be is you would use the value for new d here for new d so it would be d which is the user input d plus one is equal to the new date that you're going to display for example you understand that that should be pretty clear so this way once you get to the end and you start displaying the new day it would be displaying as a uh, new month as new month slash new day slash new year and this way you also have the option the option of also displaying the original date because you haven't changed the original date as month slash uh, day slash year yeah so whenever you make changes and this is just purely stylistic by the way so whenever you make changes you would make changes to and save it as a new date rather than changing the original date so the original date always stays the same just in case um, depending on the application I just wanted to point that out alright guys so again this has been the solution to the date function uh, I hope your solution was somewhat close to this or similar you don't have to get it right the first time this is really only a one-on-one -on -one course and the main purpose of this course is this part here where we would group all the days together all the months together with similar attributes because that is how we're going to condense our programming down instead of we could easily have done this easily have done this has what if the month was one and what if the month was two and what if the month was three and then you would have 12 different scenarios that you have to go through 
but in this case because we group them together we only have these three scenarios one if the month is four six nine eleven the second if the month has 30 days uh sorry the first is the if the month has 30 days if the month has 31 days and if the month is february and you only have those three scenarios rather than having 12 scenarios all right guys so good luck and i'll see you in the next program